Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. See if you can relate to this. I've referred to it on the air before. We've never done it as a topic. You meet a chick, she's really hot, you're banging the crap out of her. You can't believe your good fortune. Hot chick, cool chick, nice girl, fun to hang out with, all good. Banging, banging, banging. So then you pull the trigger. You say, okay, let's move in together. Or let's get married. Or let's get married uh, after we live in together for a while or whatever. So you move in. And when you do, suddenly you see the other side. Suddenly she chunks up. Suddenly she chops her hair off. One of those cute short haircuts. And then suddenly you went from having all this sex, sex anywhere, anytime, anything, any place, and suddenly... She's tired, she has a headache, it hurts, she's allergic to latex, we just had sex last week, what are you doing? Ever get that one? Come on, how much do you need? Suddenly everything starts heading downhill, everything. All the things she was perfectly happy to do. Now that she's got you, now she finds it all to be a big bother. Used to be she was a freak. Used to be she did anything and everything. Now you kind of find out that she used sex, as I always love to say, as a lost leader. You know what a lost leader is, right? A lost leader. Ever see uh, something on sale in the supermarket? Lately, it's been 12 can packs of soda. 12 packs. And they sell them for like, uh, yeah, I go to Ralph's, they'll sell them for like two ninety nine or two forty nine or one ninety nine. dollars I mean, After a while, it's like, they can't be making money on this. They cannot be making money on this. Two liter bottle of Pepsi, 99 cents. How do you make money on this? How much does it cost just to get the guy to take the hand truck and roll those babies into the supermarket? You can't tell me that's 99 cents. That's a loss leader. It's an item that is sold for less than cost to get you into the store. No limit. All the 12 packs of Diet Pepsi you can possibly put in your shopping cart. The $1.99, $2.49, whatever. Three for ten dollars, four for ten dollars, five for ten dollars. Sometimes I go to the supermarket, I think I'm losing my mind. Because, you know, they talk about inflation all the time, right? Talk about inflation, all oh, prices. Oh, thing, you used to be able to get a loaf of bread for a nickel. You used to be able to get on the bus for ten cents. Oh, inflation, terrible. Sometimes I think I'm going nuts. I go into the store and things are getting cheaper. Soda being one of the prime examples. But the reality is the supermarket sells stuff like that for less than cost to get you in the door. Figuring you're not just going to come in and buy soda. They're going to get you to buy other things that are overpriced. Same thing at any fast food restaurants. I once read that McDonald's makes no money, zero, on a hamburger. Zero. What you pay for it is what it costs. And sometimes they reduce the price of that. Ever see a single hamburger at McDonald's? Usually it's like 79 cents, sometimes it's 59 cents, sometimes it's 39 cents. You can't make money on selling a hamburger for 39 cents. Oh, but they do because they make huge margins on french fries and soda. That's why they want to get you into a combo meal. Because that's where the profit is. By the way, I say this not as a complainer. I'm an admirer of McDonald's. I admire the company. I admire their marketing savvy. I have owned the stock from time to time. 
completely uh, love the whole history of the uh, McDonald's franchises. I read the book Fast Food Nation and uh, did, uh, mostly just to learn about McDonald's. So I'm not saying this is a criticism of McDonald's. I love McDonald's. But even McDonald's uses loss leaders. Sure. A hamburger on which they make no profit to get you to come in and buy the other stuff. It's a common marketing tool. And that's what women frequently use sex for. Any place, any time, any position. When you meet a woman, oh, she, you can't believe your self-esteem. It goes through the roof because she's so hot for you 24 hours a day. And she's sending you text messages and emails and sending you paging you and telling you know, there's any little uh, messages how she can't wait to pounce on you later on when you come home and stuff. I mean, it's, you cannot believe how hot you are because she is just insatiable. She has to have you, have you, have you, have you, have you. Have you, have you, have you. And ultimately, uh, once you move in, suddenly you find out what her real sex drive is. All right, if you want to, okay, I have to get up in the morning and make it quick, okay. <laughs> now, what I find fascinating about this, because I look at this as though someone who's been married and divorced four times, I have had uh, relationships where I have lived with people. I find it fascinating when women start to lay off the sex, find excuses, not look so good anymore, how they uh, freak out and start to worry when you start looking at other chicks. I had the one chick that I've imitated on the air many times when I uh, was asked a simple question. I was asked a simple question. A woman pointed to Salma Hayek on TV screen and said, what do you think of her? And I gave an honest answer. She is smoking hot. I'd pay cash for that. And the response was, <laughs> Oh, so that's what you like. I don't look anything like that. That's what you prefer. That's what you like. Of course, I wouldn't be staring at Selma Hayek if you were giving me what I need. There was a time when your breasts were in my face so much I couldn't see the TV screen if I dry. If my uh, hand is on the channel selector or the uh, remote control long enough to find Selma Hayek and then stare at her, you're not doing your job. Obviously, if I'm taking the time out to look at somebody on television, it's because you aren't in there getting the job done. So what happens with me, and I don't know about you, but what happens with me is when somebody starts to let off the throttle, when they start acting like sex is a chore, some guys this doesn't affect, but it affects me. When they start acting like sex is a chore, when you have to start negotiating for sex, all right, uh, I'll have sex with you and I'll make you breakfast in the morning. Ever made one of those deals to get what you want? And she relents and gives you what you want? When women start doing that with me, I lose interest. And it's very hard to get it back. I lose interest. I don't have an interest anymore. The minute I have to beg, the minute I have to ask for a favor, the minute I have to negotiate, I'm out. Out. And it can't be revived. It, I can't fix it. Can't do it. I mean, by that time, I'm spinning my wheels even staying in the relationship because at that point, it cannot be revived. Later on, when you start going out and uh, going back to the gym and you start uh, offering to do me anywhere, anytime, because you see my attention is wandering, it's already too late. It's already too late. I mean, why weren't you like this before? Because you were an arrogant bitch, that's why. Because you use sex to get me into a relationship, and then once I'm in the relationship, uh, then I find out your real interest in me. Your real interest in sex. Your real sex drive. I find out what that really is. And then you think later on, you can just, anytime you want to turn it on or turn me on, you can. Well, you can't. 
If I ever had to negotiate with you or beg you or plead with you, if I ever had to watch you fall asleep while I walked off to the other room, if I ever had, right, ever do that, guys, ever sitting up in the middle of the night because she went to sleep? I can't revive. I cannot go back there. Later on, when she sees that it's uh, getting desperate and it's time to start, uh, you know, it's time to start taking the glamour photos, with her, I'm out. Uh, by that time, I have checked out. I've done express checkout. I've left my keys at the counter. I'm like, out of there. Are you with somebody who's done something like this to you? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. That sounds like you got the best job of them all. You betcha, baby. The Tom Likas Show. Like Eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Ron on the Tom Liga Show, Helen. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ron. Hey, how's it going, man? I, Great. I, I have a related uh, uh, scenario that happened. Uh, my ex girlfriend. She was a hot girl, short, petite. Gave me everything I wanted when we first got together. About six months into relationship, she started pulling this. You know, sex is a hassle. I don't want to give it to you. Uh, blah, 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 and all this crap, and every time she said it to me, I lost interest in it. I just wanted to say I agree with your point on that, man. I lose absolute interest. Yeah, in and I'm done. You can't, you can't revive it later. Right. Uh, ladies, if you plan to keep a man's attention all the way through a relationship, you better be hot all the time. You better be available all the time. You better be putting out every which way the way you did before we moved in together all the time, or it's going to be done. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, it makes it a hassle on me knowing that it's a hassle for her to have sex with me. Yes. So uh, That's all I had to say. Take me out with the bong load, Tom. Here you go, Ron. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Rodney on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tommy. How are you, Rodney? I'm fine. Right on. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Actually, it's an honor to talk to you. It is indeed. <laughs> hey, check this out. So, so I meet this girl in this bar, and she's with her mom. And at first, I was kind of like, "Whoa, her mom's pretty hot." And uh, I started walking over that way, kind of mingling over that way, and and then uh, her daughter shows up, and somehow after. You know, time goes by, I, I start talking to the daughter, and we start going out, and she is just, you know, no complaint. She's she's borderline freak. She's, she's you know, there's no complaints. We, we get into a relationship at last for, like, probably six months before we start getting serious, and then, sure enough, she sold me the goods, and I, I bought her a ring and proposed. Went to uh, get married. We got married. The very night of our wedding, she wanted nothing. I was, she was too tired. Oh, that's and the start right there. That was, uh, that was on the Red Flag show. If, if she won't have sex on your wedding night, that's the biggest red flag you can ever get. No, but she was really interested in opening those gifts. And, uh, and, then, and then from that point on, it was like our honeymoon sucked. And, and after that, it was like done. I don't know. I should have got it annulled immediately. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, boy. And how much did that cost you? Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. We had a house. I, I walked away. Anyways, okay, so the story continues. So then after about four years, I find out that she's seeing somebody that she works with, and, and she's, she's giving it to him. And I'm just like, what? So I walked out from the whole thing, left the house to her, left everything to her, and I said, just get the f*** away from me. Oh, my God. Sorry about the swearing. Uh, you left to the house? <laughs> Why'd you do that? I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. I, I wasn't thinking straight. Yeah. She took it all. And you know what she did? She cashed in that equity, and she freaking went on vacation for like three months. Bet she did. Yeah, she spent it all. Unbelievable. But, unbelievable, yeah. So so next time around, no way, man. It's, it's I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so so yeah, that's it, and we got divorced. Another reason, by the way, not to get into a serious relationship, because this is the kind of thing that can happen. Absolutely. Thank you, Rodney. All right, take me out with my bong hit. There you go. Hey, 
Thank you, Tom. Doug, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Thanks for, thanks for taking my phone call. First time, uh, first time caller. Uh, I've been a listener for a long time. Cool. Um, I, I just relocated out to Seattle from, uh, from actually New York, and I was dating this Chinese chick. I'm a single dad. I got a 16 year old son that I raised myself. Um, so, um, I spent a lot of, a lot of my years of my career working in South Korea for a large American insurance company over there. So, we, we, I used to run the, the Korean chicks pretty hard over there, so I came back to the States and I met this, this Chinese chick. Well, when I first started going out with her, I mean, she was like, she came out of a concentration camp. She couldn't get in enough. And, I mean, it was, she like, like you were mentioning earlier, she'd do it any place, in the closet, on the floor. I mean, she was pretty hot to trot. And, and, and I'm, you know, I'm from the old school where I'm not getting married. I'm not going to buy the cow and get the milk for free, you know. So, anyways, once she finally realized that she can't close the deal, she started putting me on the reward program, you know, where she, you know, let's do this and let's do that, what she wanted to do. And I said, look, I want to golf and I want to go out and, you know, toss some coal ones back with, with the fellas, you know. And um, once it, once it, once she started telling me, hey, look, you know, this is, we're going <laughs> to, this you're going to do what I say or, you know, you're not going to get it. I said, ah, this, ain't, this ain't working out. Time to go. We're going <laughs> to cut you loose, so. That's, um, yeah, oh that's, you know, that's, that's women for you, though. Anytime they put you on the reward program, it's time to go. Yeah, so I told her, I said, and, and again, I'm pretty close with my son. As a matter of fact, my son's a, a big fan of yours, so. Mm -hmm. And I told him, and you got to have the right mindset. You know, you don't chase them, let them chase you, and. And, and a lot of, and then your success, your success will follow. You know. So. Absolutely true. Absolutely true, Doug. Thank you for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Avery on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay, Avery. Hey, I just had one comment to make, and it's to all the women out there that are listening. Um, I got married about five years ago, and my mom's a total prude. But the best advice she ever gave me was. Even if you don't want to do it, you got to put out for your husband. That's the only way to keep him mm -hmm. and give him oral sex when he wants it, and just you know, just put on a happy face and do it. That's what you got to do. Right. That's the only way to keep him. That's that's, that's it. What I've been doing, and we've been happy for five years now. Two kids. There's days I don't feel like doing it, and I'm tired. But once it starts happening, you get in the mood, and it just goes from or there. Or be prepared for him to move on to somebody who's uh, not tired of him. Yeah, and you know, I I love my husband, and I know he loves me, and and I don't have anything to lose by it. I have everything to gain by it. So, you know, sex is great, and that's that's how you keep your man. You got to put out whether you want to or not. You have to put out. You uh, do. Not only that, you have to start wanting to. Even when you yeah. don't want to, you have to learn how to want to. You get in the mood once you start. You know, even if you don't want to, you get in the mood, and all of a sudden things just start happening. Yeah. So. That's just all I have to say. Thank you, Avery. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is your telephone number. Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm okay, Alan. Hey, I'm telling you, man, I used to not believe in you, and right now you are 100%. The only thing that women are good for is sexual favors. Yeah, you bet. Oh. Uh and it's it's a hundred percent accurate. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's here. Got so, in other words, you on. used to believe in love. Oh, what's love anymore? Uh huh. You know, hundred percent accurate, man. I'm telling you, this is unbelievable. Going through a dilemma right now, and uh, you know, it, it comes down to a financial standpoint. And when women want to kick down, oh, believe me, it's like, oh, well, wait, I've got something else to pay for. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, their burden becomes ours, and we've got to do twice the job and cover our own and them. Oh, God. It's unbelievable. Uh-huh. So I just wanted to say thank you, man. Take me out with a bong hit, brother. Here you go, Alan. Can we all just get a bong? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Shane in Portland, Oregon. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's a pleasure. Uh, first time, long time, brother. Thank you. Hey, uh, yeah, I was just telling uh, Dino there that, man, I, I got married, and just before we got married, everything was perfect. I mean, it was everything I wanted. Uh, we got married, 
started to back off, and I asked my wife, I said, uh, you know who Tom Likas is? And she said, no. I said, you know, the guy I listen to all the time on the radio. She goes, no. I said, okay. So uh, six months into this, man, we're just not, nothing's happening. We're not getting it. And uh, I said, uh, one day I was at work, I called her. I said, you know what, let me ask you something. And uh, I thought she was cheating on me, but she wasn't. And I told her, I said, you you uh, remember that Tom Likas guy I asked you about? She said, yeah. I said, I came in this with Tom. I'm going out with Tom. And she said, what's that supposed to mean? And I said, tune him in, and I'm telling you right now, DTB. And she said, what? And I hung up on her. And uh, that night I went and got my brother. I didn't go home for two days. And I sent her an email, and she tuned in and uh, found out what that meant to one of my friends. She had all my stuff out in the front yard packed up. I haven't been home since, but I'm telling you. I came in with Tom, and I went out with Tom. That's the only way to live. Love that. And now are you getting more ass than a toilet seat, Jane? That's right, man. And can you do me one favor, Tom? What's that, Jay? Can you take her out like that boy went out in Washington with the horse? Oh, eat him claw style. Sure I can. <laughs> Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. Maybe I can be one of your interns. Oh, you can be one of my interns any time, but we put you through a rigorous uh, training. Oh, session. really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We're talking about chicks who start off. Oh yeah, bam, bam, bam. They love it. They can't get enough. Oh, you are the hottest man. You're a stud. You are so hot. I need you. I need you seven times a day. I need you twenty four hours a day. I need you to meet me at my office for lunch. I want you. To Push all the papers off my desk and do me right there. Oh, oh, oh. Then she moves in with you. It's like, we had sex this week already. How much do you need? You're a you're a sex fiend. You're a horn dog. Uh, but later on, when they notice you're not looking at them anymore, they try to get you back by offering you stuff they should have been offering you all this time. Mike on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's uh, Mike in Seattle. Yes. Uh, my wife has been kind of subtle about things. She, before we got, or before we got married in the early years of our marriage, she was really on time with everything. Everything was cool. And now we've got three kids. We've been married like eight years and it, she, she's still there and all, but she doesn't try very hard anymore. Right. She's still in good shape, but she's just not putting in the effort as much. Uh huh. I don't know. It's getting a little old and now I'm kind of strapped in. I don't, you know, I can look around, but there's no, you know, Going outside the marriage, of course, because I'm that kind of guy. But I don't know. Just you, a little but irritating. You, but you got I, robbed. You, know, you got robbed. Did you tell her you got robbed? <laughs> uh, I guess I could. I haven't because I like things. I like things to still come through. But uh, so, in other words, you are her slave. You will. You are now going to uh, do what she wants, and that's that. Yeah, kind of. I mean, she's oh. worse. I stay at home with our kids too. So oh, like, meow, Mike. What are you doing? Well, I do what I want. I've got a pretty good life. I just really uh, let you uh, f find a babysitter to work with. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, you know, it's, it can be. What 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 were you doing for a career before you became a house husband? Yeah, I used to deliver sailboats. I had a fun life. I mean, I I was a fun guy. I just kind of got married, had kids, and things kind of changed. You know. Yeah, and you married somebody who is in complete control of you. Um, I guess a little bit, yeah, right. Not a little bit. If you were right. single, you would be having sex all the time. Well, that's very true. But but, but uh, the slave master says no. I wanted to have kids, too. I just, uh, you know, it was kind you know, of one but of you, But you wanted, to have you wanted to have sex also. Yeah. You didn't just I want to have it kids. To still pretty hot. I didn't want it to cool down like it did. Yeah, well, now you know how much she really enjoyed sex with you. 
uh, I guess that could be as much a statement on me as anything else. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Mike is in Parkland, Oregon on the Tom Lika Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hey, you're dead on. Uh, I dumped my first wife because she was getting fat and wouldn't put out. And uh, the lay down the law going into number two, and when uh, I was shredded and ripped to going in there, she was shredded and ripped. She started putting all the weight. I told her to dump it. She started slowing down in the rack. I said, it ain't working or I'm going to walk. And uh, just keep got to dial in the channel and it keeps coming back, no problem. So you just keep changing uh, chicks until you're going to get what you want. No, no, I'm remarried. But every time she starts slipping, I let her know. And I, she also knows, you know, I make uh, six figures plus with you that I can walk any time and do okay. Do you have a train so up? I, she keeps, uh, every time she's off the ranch, I pull her right back in. You know, lose the weight and start putting out. That's it. And she does it. Absolutely, she does because she knows, uh, you know, like you say, she knows what's uh, what she's going to be out on her ass if she doesn't. Mm-mm-mm. You're, you're, you, Tom, for all the young, I'm 48. For all the young pups out there, listen to Tom. He's the man. He knows exactly what he's talking about. No doubt about it. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Carrie on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Carrie. How are you? Great. <laughs> I wanted to call because, uh, you know, I was listening and... I have kind of fallen into what you were talking about. Not so bad, but I kind of have. And I want to apologize to my husband on air, and I want to try and change. And I wanted to thank you for talking about it over the air because I don't want to screw up our marriage like that, and I understand what you're saying completely. How, uh, how long have you been married? i um, been married for just a little bit over a year, been living together for a total of three years. And, I mean, we have a, a pretty crazy sex life. Um, he still gets to be with other women a lot. Um, and why, so, why would you want to get married to somebody <laughs> who, who still needs to be with other women? Oh, we're, well, we kind of live a, a swingers lifestyle. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh God, no. Why is that so bad? Oh, because you don't need to be married. Why do you need to be married? It, the, the whole thing is silly. Swinging is silly. Why is that? Because, you know what, if you didn't get married, you wouldn't need to be a swinger. Oh, uh, I, I think it... It works for us. That you're in denial. You're somebody who needs to have a lot of sex with a lot of different people. Oh, uh, well, I mean, if you want to think that, I mean... No, if you have to go to swing clubs, I'm not just thinking that. That's what it is. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to apologize to my husband over the air and say I was going to try harder. Good. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Blows me away. Let's say hello to Lilla on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Yes, I want to raise my hand too, guys. I'm pretty concerned, like I say. Uh, I have been in this country for nine months, and all of you guys just think about sex. What country are you from? I'm from Colombia. Well, let me tell you, in Colombia, guys think about sex, too. Believe me. Yeah, I know. But they are pretty more conservative than you guys. You are very frank, very like, okay, I don't want compromise. I just want Well, no, in Colombia, they that. just marry you and then have sex with other people. That's what they do. <laughs> yeah, but you... I've dated you Colombian chicks. Say, I know the whole story, dear. No, you know what? You definitely you don't want compromise. No! No, I know. And... I would like to know why. Why? Because if you have to compromise, you're with the wrong person. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have to compromise, it means you pick the wrong person. Yeah, but, you know, I think, I think, I love this country. I like pretty much the people here, but I think that... You are also a pretty material, and you just think about that. There is more things important in there. But, but again, you, 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 the only difference between Colombia and the United States in this regard is that men are honest here about it, and in Colombia, they pretend they don't care, and then they have sex with other people. No, no, no. We care also. We care, and we do, and we have sex, too, but 
U.S. is like a, it's like a meal every day, every morning. Yeah, every day. that's right. We want it. <laughs> and by the way, you think guys in Colombia don't want it every day? Yeah, they probably they do, but they first have to compromise before they get something from a woman. Well, then again, why? That I always say, you know, our show would work really well in South America. I know it would, because uh, I, I think if I went on the air there and told guys this would be uh, a revelation to them. And that is, uh, hey, uh, you, you know what? You don't have to get married or have a girlfriend. You can have sex every night. Just don't get hooked up with somebody. I'm done. I'm done. Definitely, guys. I know. I know you have your your thoughts. I very respect of that. I know, but I also you are pretty cute. The American son really cute. So yeah. I I just want to say my opinion of that. Well, you did. Are you married, by the way? No, I'm not. You're I'm not. <laughs> so what? Do you date American man? No, I'm dating American guy. It's pretty cool. Is that why you came here? Because you're dating American guys? No, <laughs> I came here from work. You came and here for work, and you met an American guy. I met an American guy. And, and, and he wants sex all the time, and you made him compromise? Is that what you're telling us? You are making me like that. <laughs> I'm making you like what? Like that, like a crazy girl. Are you a crazy girl? Yeah. I, I used to be pretty calm down, but now I'm, I'm switching myself. But anyway. Why are you so crazy? <laughs> for you guys, for this American guy. We, well, we, we drive you crazy? You drive me crazy, actually, yeah. Really? So, and you kind of like it, too. Listen to that. I can, listen to how your voice change. You kind of like it. You kind of what? You kind of like it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you do. Okay. It, okay. it shows. We can tell. What you can say. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Tom, pretty much what's pretty cool to talk to you. Just want to say that. Oh. And, well, we talk. In our location, then. All right, call me anytime. Thanks for the call. Son. The top like it show. It's Dave. Hello. Hello. Tom. Hello, Dave. How the hell are you? Yes, I care. Doing great. Cannot wait to see you at Louisville. I will try like hell to make it. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to put my head on the chopping block for all these listeners out there that ain't taking you seriously. Okay. I didn't follow any of your rules, and I'm an ultimate pussy. Here's why. About five years ago, I met the girl of my dreams. We got together. She, she banged me six ways from Sunday all the time, and then I fell in love oh with boy. her. Oh, boy. You know, she said she was on birth control, everything was all good, so I started ditching the condoms, rule number one that I broke. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, she's pregnant. Of course. <laughs> so I try to be... I can't believe that happened! How did that happen? Oh, oh, I took him. Oh. But anyhow, next thing I know, she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. so I try to be a stand-up guy, work my butt off. You know, we get serious. We start trying to get our lives together and pitch in my income. She was able to get a house and everything. Because of my credit, I was not able to get on the note for the house. Another another rule I broke. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Man, this is embarrassing. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I kept working and working and working, and the sex eventually stopped. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh completely stopped dead in its tracks, you know, and, I, you know, like a pussy, I, I ignored the warning signs and just kept working, just doing all, all this and that, and then uh, eventually she started getting some weird emails and weird calls, she'd have to go in the other room to take a call, so I, I dug into her computer and I found out some things and found out that she was cheating, and like a pussy, I try to stay and work it out. Oh, my God! Ugh. God, I've, I've, I've thought about killing myself a couple of times because I just feel so weak and stupid. Don't do that. You're back here in the bosom of your family at the Tom Liga Show. You're not going to do that stuff anymore. The Tom Liga Show.